There are two types of people in the world. Those who wait patiently until all the features that they need are finally released by the tools that they love. And those who just go out and build them themselves in the meantime. Let's take charts in Notion. It would be super useful if you had a way to visualize your data. And surely Notion doesn't offer a way right now for built-in charts. But there are already a lot of tools out there that you can use today to create stunning and insightful charts right in your Notion workspace. So here are three ways to add charts to Notion today, sorted by difficulty from Notion Newbie all the way to Notion Ninja. Level one, Notion Newbie. The easiest way to get charts into your Notion workspace is through embeds. As you know, right now you can embed a ton of things in Notion, ranging from tweets to YouTube videos, well, to also graphs. The good thing is that also a lot of charting tools allow you to take the charts that you've created with them and then embed them somewhere else. So this method is the easiest one if you're just looking for a quick and easy fix. Pros, it's super easy to implement and there are a wide number of embeds supported. Cons, your data lives outside of Notion, right? You can't directly connect your databases to that third-party tool and you need to use this third-party tool pretty heavily in order to make actually the charts and for it to make sense to re-embed them. Oh, and while you're learning about charts, make sure to subscribe to the channel because why not? One example for a third-party app with charts would be Causal, which is a great app if you need to build advanced financial models. Now in here I have already my very simple model and as you can see if I go to the dashboard, this is the graph that gets rendered based of it and I can just click on share and then go for embed and then copy the embed code and then I can head on over to Notion to add this chart to my report. Now one thing to know is that oftentimes when you have these tools that allow you to embed their charts, what they will give you is an iframe code, right? So if I paste what I copied, I get this iframe blah 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 thing and Notion doesn't know what to do with it if you just paste it like this. So instead of pasting it like this, what you want to do is you want to type slash embed and in here you can now, even though it says uh, paste the link, you can also paste this iframe part and click on embed link and will properly process it. So as you can see, I have here now my uh, chart, my embedding, and I can adjust the size of it uh, the way I want it, depending on what I want to see. Uh, I can also adjust the alignment since the recent Notion update. Now with a centered one here, that doesn't matter, matter too much, but if you have a full width report, right, and you don't want like it to be this big, right, you only care, let's say, about this part, and you don't want it center aligned, you can go here and then click here to left align it or the other way around. And now you have your chart embedded in Notion. Level two for Notion nerds, using Google Sheets Sync. Now, of course you know that you can create charts in Google Sync. And just like with other tools, you can embed these charts then into Notion. But, and that's the key difference to method one, you can use a third party tool like Make or Zapier to actually sync your data from Notion to Google Sheets. That way, you can use Google Sheets to create a chart, but your data can live inside Notion and you can have Notion as your main hub for the work. Pros, you get automatically updated data, you can keep your data in Notion and it's free to use. Con, it's not really suited for a complex data situation. You could build a more complex one, but for the most part this will be great if you just need to push new information from Notion to Google Sheets. Second, well, you get the typical Google Sheets look. It's okay with the charts, but they're not the prettiest around. And third, you need to use three tools in total, right? You need Notion, Sheets, and then the third party tool that connects the both. So in this example, I'm using Make, my favorite no-code automation tool to connect both Notion and Google Sheets. And as you can see here, all we do is we watch the database items in Notion. So I check, okay, in my workspace, in this database, is there anything new? And then I push that information to Google Sheets and add a new row to the spreadsheet and a sheet with the corresponding values. Very straightforward automation to push your data. Now, I have step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this with a link in the description. In there, you can also find a template if you want to download this. Let's just take a look at how it actually works with Sheets, right? So if you go to Sheets, uh, on the other side, we have here my different uh, values, right? So they are pushed from uh, Notion and uh, signify my subscriber growth across the different platforms. And then I simply created a chart because of course, Google Sheet just lets you create charts fairly easily. I could of course customize this, but if I'm happy with it, 
all I need to do to embed it into Notion is to click on the three dots and then say publish chart. And then here I can get this link. So I can just copy this link, go back to um, Notion. And again, even though it's a link, don't paste it directly because if you do, what it wants to do is it wants to do embed a Google Drive and we don't want the access to the file, right? We just want the graph. So again, we will type slash embed and then paste the link. And then it actually shows up as a chart in a second. And just like before, we can adjust the size until we have it in there just the way we want it. Level three for Notion Ninjas using Rose. Rose is a spreadsheet tool with superpowers that is just perfect for our situation. Rose can run API calls directly in a spreadsheet, which means that we can, in Rose, pull the data from Notion right into your spreadsheet. That allows us to do complex data manipulation. Uh, we can get updated data whenever something in Notion changes. It's overall much, much easier to handle a more complex situation. You can even add easily other data sources, right? So if your data lives, for example, in Google Analytics or you have somewhere else where you have important information, you can use that to sync it into rows as well. The setup can be a bit overwhelming, but that's why I created a template for you that you can get with the link in the description. Pros. It allows for complex data modeling. You can keep all your data in Notion. It will automatically update and you can also build the whole thing for free. Cons, well, it's the most complex to set up. To get started with Notion and Rose, we first need to set up our API call to get the data from Notion into Rose. So in Notion, I have this information about my uh, time that I spent uh, on different activities and I want to get that now in here and I can do so by defining first the few variables that we need for the call here. So I will just type endpoint here and then in here I will paste the URL that we need to make our request to Notion and grab that information. And that uh, URL we can construct in rows with a formula and the formula that we're going to use for this, oops, one second, is this one. And as you can see, we concatenate. So we uh, combine various strings. We combine uh, this uh, api.notion.com v1 databases. Then we take the value from b2, which is still empty. And then we add query to the end. And that's because we need to insert between database and query the actual database ID. And this way we can easily swap out a database ID if we want to change our data. So I'm going to hit enter. And now uh, I need to, of course, define the database ID. So this will be next part, so database ID. And for this one, we need to go to Notion and we need to open our database as a full page, right? It's an inline one here. So I need to click on here, say open as a page, and then I can copy the link to it here. And then I can go back to my report and in my report uh, or anywhere else, I can paste now this uh, thing and then I can grab the part. Ooh, first, we let's remove the link. And then we need to grab the part between the workspace names. So in my case, it's lab playground, that's the name and the first question mark. So this part of the URL, that's your database ID. So we want to copy that, head on over here and then paste it into here. And now if we inspect the one above, we will see that this one uh, automatically adds this ID here. Great. So that's the first step. Now when making an API request to Notion, we also need to authorize us to prove that we are actually allowed to get this information. So the next two things that we want to set up are the, um, our secret token for Notion and the actual um, authorization method. And for authorization, we can again paste in here a formula to uh, combine them. And this time we concatenate bearer with the space and the value in here. And again, if you need at any point help with these things, you can also find them all in the written blog post in the description below together with the exact things to copy paste. So we have this and right now we don't have a secret token. So what we need to do is we need to head over to notion.so slash my integrations. And here you can create your own API key for Notion. As you can see, I already have a few ones, but if you wanted to create a new one, you would click on new integration and you would uh, pick a workspace that it's supposed to go in. So in my case, this will be in the sandbox. You can give it a name, rows, charts, and then you can click on submit. Now, this will give you a secret token and I can show it here and I can copy it. And it's very important that you store this in a secure place and don't share with anyone. So I'm going to delete this after this video, otherwise they can access your Notion workspace. And you can go back into uh, rows and paste it in here. And now you have your setup for the secret and authorization. 
Now you just need to give your integration access to the data in Notion. So go back to Notion to the page where you're on and on here you can then click on the three dots in the top corner, go down to add connection and then look for the connection that you just added. If it doesn't show up here, try refreshing the page if you use Notion in the browser or restart the app uh, until it shows. Sometimes it takes a few moments. And now it will have access to the data on here. And we need to set up one last thing before we can start doing the API call. We need to add also the Notion version here as a variable and that will be 2022.06 and then 28. Now that's all the information. Now we just construct the full API call. So in order to do this, we first will create our actual um, headers that we send with the request. So let's type headers and then we can paste in as a formula this pair JSON uh, object that takes the information from authorization and the Notion version and combines it. So we get this data part here and now we can do the actual API call and for that one we um, need the post command. So we type here uh, API call and insert this thing. So post and then in brackets B1 and B6, so the endpoint first and then uh, the headers and then an empty object for the body. And when I hit enter now, we should get back a data object and this should actually contain information from our database. So in order to look at it, we can click on it and say inspect data. And this will pull up here on the side the information and we can just hover over one to see whether it's correct. So we have as the properties, oops, properties in here. Uh, love where you work, social media, perfect. So it worked. We got all the information from our Notion database into rows and can now use it here to manipulate it and create our charts. To do so, we can make our life a bit easier and just grab from the data, if we look at it again, only the relevant part, the results part. So in order to do that, we can add another uh, cell below here and call this results. And then in here, we're going to uh, pass the information from there. So I'm going to type the equal sign and then pass and just like in any other spreadsheet tool, right, this brings up one of the uh, functions and then I tell it the JSON. So the JSON here lives in B7 and then our query is um, in quotation marks and then the brackets and then another set of quotation marks, the other ones, results. And then we close it uh, all off and then hit enter. And now if I inspect this data, you see that it's just the part with uh, the responses. So we have our various uh, properties when they were created and the data then under properties. So with that, we can now very easily start manipulating our data in here by just clicking on the drop down again and then saying create data table and then just click on the next step. And now I have down here a table that gets automatically synced with the data from Notion. So whenever something changes in the Notion database, it will change down here as well. Now, of course, this information here is not the one that we care about, right? Object ID created time. That's nothing that we can work with, but we can click on the edit table here and then brings up the setup in here right now in the table columns, right? It's all the things that we don't need. So I will remove them all and then click on the drop down here. And now I can select all the individual data points from the JSON data here from Notion and put it in here. So we only care about the actual property value. So I'm opening that up and then inside all of these, we can open them up again and then just take the number. So this is what I care about, right? So I care about the social media uh, hours, the sleep hours, the deep work hours, the fun hours, the exercise hours, and then of course also about the actual day that it occurred on. So here we have a few more things to open up. You want to go for the plain text version. And then we save all changes. And now, as you can see, we still have this weird name, so we need to rename it, but now we have the actual information that we care about. So I will just quickly rename this to uh, low value work and the, uh, the next one to social media, just to show it. The other ones we can leave for now for the demonstration. And then I can reorder them, right? I can take the day one to the front. So let's rename this also actually quickly the day. And you see it's uh, not yet in the correct order, but we can quickly fix it as well. I will just highlight, oops, the whole uh, cell and then I will say, uh, oops, the, I want to highlight everything. And then I will activate the filter and sort option. And now we have our filters up here. Now it's all connected. And now I can start by uh, dragging them in the right order if I wanted to. And then we have them all sorted correctly 
and can in the next step start using uh, our charts. In order to add a chart, we can click on insert here and then say we want a chart and then we can uh, first pick the type. So for this one, let's go with a pie chart and then we select the data range. So I click in here and then just like in any other tool, right? I just highlight uh, all the relevant um, cells. Is that everything? I think so. And then we, I think it's actually uh, until uh, G and then we can hit enter. And now I get here automatically my chart with sleep, social media, all the things are correctly right. If I if it had the axis wrong, I could of course say, okay, it's actually not the day axis that I want here for the information, I want something else. I can as usually change the colors if I want them, I can add more series and uh, I can also under more option, add some description or footnotes. But here we have it, our chart and it will automatically update if the data in Notion changes. But before we look at that, let's quickly embed this now into Notion. In order to do so, we need to click on share up here and we need to say that we want to share this privately with the link in general. And then I can click on here on the three dots and say uh, embed. And now I get again, either the iframe embed code or here I also have the URL directly. So I can just copy the URL and then go back to Notion and in here just paste it and create embed. So no need to do the slash part, although you could do that here as well. And now I have my chart in here and as usually I can adjust it for uh, the size and I could also like say right in the other one that I don't want to see name or rename it and have my pie chart here for my values. Now, how can we get any data changes in here? Well, let's say, okay, so for example, exercise, right? Let's say I didn't exercise five, I exercised 15 hours in a single day for whatever reason, or let's to make it even clearer, let's say 45 hours of exercise on this day. It doesn't update automatically, but what we can do is in rows, we can either, we could just run the API call again. So if I go in here and just uh, tell it to do this again, it will pull in the new information, right? So now we have 45 here, and now we have a lot more uh, time for fun here. And as you can see, now the chart also has updated, uh, updated the wrong one, fun, not exercise. Uh, so again, we have this huge one here, or alternatively, if you don't want to do this manually, you can schedule a refresh. In order to do so, we go down here and we say uh, schedule maybe, and then I say in here equal, and then I type refresh. And that brings up this refresh command and I can now pick the uh, what I want to refresh. So I want to refresh B8 and I want to refresh it, let's say um, every 30 minutes. So then I type 30 and then min and then close it off. And now I have this refresh here. And as you can see, it has this scheduled sign and tells me, okay, the next time it will refresh uh, this data or oh, it actually refreshes the results. So this is wrong, it needs to refresh B7 for the actual API call. Uh, it will refresh it and updated it and then automatically also show you the new chart in Notion. So for example, right, if you pull in data, data and you want to see it every day, the new and updated visitors to your website, you would schedule a daily refresh and it would automatically reflect here in your chart. And to help you get a head start with rows, I've added actually this basic setup. So all the endpoints and the URL and stuff as a template in the blog post in the description. So you can download that and then you have the whole spreadsheet and the only thing you need to fill in is your database ID and your secret and then create the tables and you can get started right away without having to set up all of this. There you have it, three ways how to get charts into Notion. Which one is your favorite? Oh, and now that you know how to get charts into Notion, why not solve one of Notion's biggest remaining problems too? Here are step-by-step -step instructions on how you can finally share only a part of a database in Notion which is really, really crucial if you ever want to collaborate with people outside of your organization. Here's the video. See you in a second.